If, like me, you often get private messages from Muslims who think that a bit of copy and pasting is all that stands between you and an awful lot of praying, then you may well have heard of the miracle of iron in the Quran. Many Muslims have challenged me to debunk this, the jewel in the crown of supposed Islamic scientific miracles, to which I reply, OK. First let me show you the miracle and explain why some claim it to be a miracle. Open your Qurans and go to Surah 5725. Here it is in the Yusuf Ali translation. We have sent aforetime our messengers with clear signs and sent down with them the book and the balance of right and wrong, that men may stand forth in justice. And we sent down iron, in which is material for mighty war, as well as many benefits for mankind, that Allah may test who it is that will help. For Allah is full of strength, exalted in might, owner of the biggest stick, etc., etc., etc. The miracle is in the we sent down the iron part. <laughs> Many Muslims claim this section of the Quran is clearly referring to the scientific fact that iron really does come down to the earth from the skies, from outer space, carried on meteorites and, more rarely, in asteroids. They point out, through Surah 5725, that this information was in the Quran 1400 years ago, long before science discovered it. And then they wail, even now can the unbeliever not see the miracles of Allah? To which I reply, perhaps we can see right through them. While it is potentially arguable that Muhammad wasn't talking about meteorites at all, it is only within this context that Surah 5725 is proposed as miraculous, so it is within this context that I must address it. So, for the sake of argument, I will accept that Surah 5725 is referring to the fact that meteorites contain iron. Now, I'm not making this up. I've asked several Muslims to present me their number one miracle from the Quran and the iron miracle is often top of the list. It is obviously seen by many Muslims as something utterly inexplicable. They can't see how it can't be a miracle. Many Muslims cannot figure out how Muhammad could have known about the iron within meteorites unless the creator of the universe told him. Now, before I involuntarily urinate in my trousers, I'd like to point out that sometimes the flaw in a claim can be simply so huge that we often can't see it at first. And the iron miracle in the Quran is rather like that. So for clarity's sake, let's reiterate the Islamic claim. Muhammad was told by Allah that iron was sent down from space long before science discovered it to be true. Muhammad couldn't have known about the iron in meteorites any other way. It had to be a miracle. In essence, the whole argument is based upon the question, who else but the creator of the universe could have told Muhammad that meteorites contain iron? Well, could have been a merchant, could have been a blacksmith, could have been a weaponsmith, could have been a trader, a sailor, a soldier, a holy man, a pagan, a traveller, a wise man, a kid on the street, or maybe a beggar. Because it is a fact that many people in Muhammad's day and long, long before knew that meteorites contained iron. Warning, the next segment of this video contains Islamic kryptonite, otherwise known as facts. The first signs of iron use came from ancient Egypt and Sumer, around 4000 BCE. The iron use was found in the form of tips of small spears and ornaments. This was something of a surprise when it was first discovered, because the technology to smelt iron did not come along for several millennia. But when these artefacts were submitted to analysis, these items were found to be made from iron recovered from meteorites. Meteoric iron can easily be distinguished from smelted iron due to its high nickel content. This 5 to 26% nickel content also makes meteoric iron much easier to work with than smelted iron. 
So, meteorites were known to contain iron four and a half thousand years before the Quran. Four and a half thousand years before the Quran. In fact, the knowledge is so old it can't even be claimed as a scientific discovery, as it was made long before the birth of science. Meteorites, or shooting stars as they're sometimes called, have probably been venerated by mankind for as long as humanity has existed. The prehistoric use of meteoric iron is thought by many historians of metallurgy to be worldwide. History, despite what they teach in Islamic schools, did not begin with the Quran. Civilizations far older than Islam, from the Hittites and the Egyptians to the Greeks and the Romans, all valued meteorites precisely because of the fact they were known to contain iron. Iron was a rare metal in the Bronze Age. It was highly prized for swords and ceremonial daggers. Iron was even valued for a time above gold. The early Hittites are known to have bartered iron for silver at a rate of 40 times the iron's weight. You ask how Muhammad could possibly have known meteorites contained iron? Well, here's your answer. It's because everybody knew it. Or at least it was common knowledge to anyone who knew anything about metals. Muhammad wasn't telling the first readers of the Quran something they didn't already know, although it may have seemed like that to ignorant people. He was simply tying one of nature's most impressive spectacles to his idea of God, and the idea that God might give them iron, and thereby his blessings for quote-unquote mighty war. It's no surprise Muhammad should mention meteorites in the Quran. They have always been seen as mystical objects. The Bible mentions them. In Hebrew, meteorites were called betils, an equivalent of the Greek word betilia, meaning the residence of God. In the Bible, Jacob rests his head on such a betil stone in the desert, and in his sleep he sees a vision of the stairway to heaven leading to the throne of God. Shooting stars have been seen for as long as there have been eyes. On the YouTube of 4000 BCE, they were probably put forward as indisputable proof of God. Meteorites would have attracted much interest and scrutiny from the greatest minds of any day. That they contained iron was widely known to the Hittites, the Sumerians, the Assyrians, the Romans, the Greeks, where meteorites were often worshipped or treated as sacred relics from the gods. And speaking of which, just in case any Muslim wants to claim Muhammad knew nothing about meteorites, even if the knowledge was available at the time, I have three words for you. Hadshah al-Aswad. While I have shown that the knowledge of iron in meteorites was widespread in and before 4000 BCE, which on its own makes any claims of miraculous knowledge in Surah 5725 to be at best the result of ignorance, I have not shown that Muhammad came into contact with that knowledge or ever showed any interest in the nature of shooting stars at all. I mean, it's not as if he was the head of a religion that had elevated a piece of space rock to the status of a religious relic, now is it? Wait a minute, I forgot that one of the most sacred relics in all of Islam is almost certainly a meteorite. This is Mecca. The black cube you can see is called the Kaaba. It is the most important site in all of Islam. Each Muslim is expected to make a pilgrimage here, or Hajj, once in their lifetime, to visit Mecca and walk around the Kaaba seven times, then to pause at the southeast corner of the Kaaba to touch or kiss the Hadshah al-Aswad, the sacred black stone, an object also known as Yamin Allah, meaning the right hand of God. It was a relic from a previous religion that Muhammad saw strategic use in absorbing into Islam. The tradition says that the stone is a betil, remember the Hebrew word? A meteorite that was given to Abraham by the archangel Gabriel. This stone from the sky, as it is believed to be by both tradition and scientists, was immured into the wall of the southeast corner of the Kaaba, made central to Islam by Muhammad himself. He not only had an interest in meteorites, he prepared a place for one at the center of Islam. The sheer irony of the iron miracle is that what Muslims believe proves a theological miracle actually reinforces an atheistic refutation that religion has a friend in ignorance. This popular and often quoted miracle is highly convincing to an ignorant mind, one unfamiliar with the history of iron anyway. 
Whenever we hear the iron miracle proclaimed with conviction, we should recognize that conviction for what it is, a sign of total ignorance. At best, it's ignorance, for only an ignorant person could make such a claim with such confidence. For they could only be that confident if they were utterly unaware that the knowledge that makes them look like fools is one easy internet search away.